what is up peace and love welcome back it's been a minute I had to step away for a while between raising two young children dealing with our business Sapia painting and finishing check out sapiapaint.ca coming soon so sometimes life takes us away from our hobbies this is a hobby for me unfortunately so until it's a career that's the way it goes sometimes right but hope everybody's staying blessed there's a lot that has been going on that I've been wanting to talk about but something that has been really on me for a while and I've been thinking about what is going on is is the generational divide I'm gonna call it the generational divide we have almost like a conflict between generations me I'm 29 years old most of my peers are in, in between maybe 29 to 35 consider I guess we're considered the millennial generation so when we look at the millennial generation people between that age group and then we look at what they call the baby boomer generation who is basically people the age of our parents people people born post-war in the 50s and 60s this generation and our generation it is my belief have never been more divided than we are now and I don't think two generations of people mind you I, I you'd have to be able to go back through history and look at this but I don't think there's ever been two generations of people that are so far divided against each other and I'm gonna explain why it is my belief that the main reason for this is time travel you gonna be like what is this guy talking about time travel yes time travel if we okay when we look at a time machine, you think about Back to the Future, you think about the DeLorean, right? This is this this machine that takes you from one point back to the future or into the future, wherever you want to go, but you can travel through time. Well, think about a bullet train. There's now trains, like you look in Japan, where somebody can take a train from this part of Japan to that part of Japan, be there in 10 minutes, when without this piece of technology, if someone was in a carriage, it would take them all day, or maybe maybe multiple days. But now, as we have more and more technological advances, we're able to do more in a smaller period of time. If if someone can say we got to go downtown to see the convention, and everybody typically takes an hour to get downtown to see the convention, they have to jump in their cars but hey I have this piece of technology that allows me to get down there in two minutes so I'm able to get to where everybody else wants to go in a fraction of the time that it takes everybody else I'm able to get there now let's say I'm able to get down to the convention and I have another piece of technology that allows me to watch it without having to deal with all the time delays and having to deal with all that stuff. So I'm able to get there, watch it, and now I can come back in the same amount of time that the other people haven't even got out the door. So through technology, maybe that's slightly a bad illustration, but through technology in this moment in time, we are able to do way more than any other generation in history is able to do in a much smaller period of time. People are able to communicate with people, do things, multitask. You'd be able to sit there and watch four different shows while listening to a podcast, while you're on a group chat. You're crossing the boundaries of time. And when we look at time, we say, well, what the hell is time anyways? What is time? Most people don't realize there's been some things called calendar reforms so we talk about oh back 30 AD well not really actually there's been multiple calendar reforms that have set back or pushed forward this thing called time uh, there didn't used to be seven days in a week you know what I'm saying this is a creation all of these things that we agree upon in terms of hours and days and time itself is in fact an illusion that we choose to buy into and that's why when you see 
some crazy shit happen. Like, you know, sometimes you should, somebody might nearly get hit by a car. They grab somebody and they save somebody from getting hit by a car. You talk to a first responder and think you're an experience they had under the heat of the moment. They'll always say time stopped. Even if you're an athlete, you know you're on the court. You hit that game winning shot, time stops. Because in that moment, you break the fabric of reality. You break through the barrier, the illusion of time. And so what I'm trying to say is with the technology that the baby or sorry that the millennial generation that my generation lives with on a day-to-day basis because it is so advanced and it is allowing us to literally travel through time we're able to do an amazingly um, uh, a huge amount more of activities of things in a smaller period of time we're in a position where we're faced with this conflict with the generation that came before us that did not have any of this type of technology in their lives. They have it now, but they didn't have it through from, from being a child up. Like most people our parents' age <clears throat> never had a computer until they were adults. Whereas most children now are born into a house with multiple computers in it. So this inevitable uh change in reality that the two different generations are faced with has led to a lot of conflict. It's my contention that because of this advancement in technology for our millennial generation, the way we practice relationships, the way we experience emotions, the way we look at everything about life is completely different than our parents. Completely different. It's the generation before us and the way they approached life, the way they approached growth, the way they approached the metamorphosis of relationships, of uh, family dynamics, of careers, of communication. Communication is a great example. Back in the day, it was always said, okay, if there's an issue now, you know, you got to face somebody man to man. You got to approach a situation. you know, you got to speak to somebody man to man. Well, now in these days and times with conflicts, you don't see that anymore with people my age, people between 20, say between 25 to 35, it does not happen that way anymore. If you got a conflict, be prepared for the text message battle going on because people exist. People, my generation exist in a world that is completely foreign to the generations before us. And we have to be honest about the realities that of the problems and the issues that come from this, particularly when it comes to dealing with that other generation. We, we talk about uh, emotions, right? And when we look at our generation, a lot of times you'd be hearing from your parents or their generation, the baby boomers, that this generation is soft. People these days are soft. They're, they're, they're too weak. They don't have a strong backbone. And to some degree, maybe that's true. But we have to look at the, the way that our generation exists. We exist in what you call uh, a profile. Everybody's concerned with their profile. Everybody's talking about their, their Instagram profile or their Facebook profile or their Snapchat or whatever. But their whole entire lives and even careers, your education exists inside this profile. And so the sensitivity level, I would say, the sensitivity level of people these days is much higher than it used to be. The, the sensitivity level is through the roof with our generation. And is that a bad thing? I think to some degree maybe it is, but to some degree maybe it's not. Because it's made us more self-aware of how we deal with each other, how we should approach life, how, we should, how should we approach growth. Now when we talk about something like careers and money, the way that we as millennials might approach careers and money is completely different than the way that our parents approached careers and making money. It was was back in our parents' day 30 years ago where I live here in Vancouver. Someone could just work hard, get a good job, work hard and buy a house and buy a car and be able to just make it and do that. Whereas these days, forget that. 
if you got a job and you're trying to work hard every day and save money to buy a house in Vancouver, dream on. It's not going to happen. You need to be an entrepreneur these days. If you want to make money and you really want to accomplish the same type of things that our parents were able to accomplish, it takes another level of thinking. It takes thinking differently. It takes looking at the world differently, right? And so, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot. I've been observing different conflicts that, that take place all the way from in, in uh, the media and whatnot between the baby boomers and the millennials and all the way down to just social life, my life, and, and dealings with that generation versus our generation. And what are the solutions? Is there solutions? I don't know, because the time travel is not slowing down. It is not slowing down. We may think about technology and calling it time travel is crazy, but if the DeLorean was a time machine, what is a bullet train? And what, what about when these things get to a level? Like, for example, in Calgary, a few years ago, in the University of Calgary, they were able to teleport, I believe, a photon. But they're still able to teleport something from one place to another. So believe it, that is coming for our generation. Check out 2045.com. Uh, there's things that we are going to see and the way that we are able to travel, the way we are able to communicate, the way we are able to exist will become so much faster and it already is becoming faster that the generation before us, it is not going to become any easier for that generation and it's not going to become any easier for our generation either. And so we're going to have to try and find ways to understand each other, which is not easy at all, not at all, and we're going to have to find ways to evolve to some degree. That means that our parents' generation are going to have to evolve the way that they approach life, the way they approach their kids, the way they approach communication, the way they approach the corporal nature that that, that generation was raised with and approached life with. Well, we're not living in that day and age anymore, but likewise, it's going to take understanding and an evolution from our generation as well from from the millennials we have to understand that what we're experiencing with the speed of life the rapid pace of growth with the the selfie generation the profile generation that we're crossing into new territory and it, it is affecting us emotionally everybody you know and so it's going to take a great deal of self-awareness to move through it but this is something that it's been weighing on me lately and I've been thinking a lot about as I observe life and I think it's something that we all, whether you are of that baby boomer generation or whether you're my generation, need to think about. And my generation, if we have kids, we need to think about what it's going to be like for our kids. <laughs> because if it's crazy now and if there's issues between the generations now, how do we try and bridge that gap for those of us who are millennials that have children of our own? questions deep questions that need to be asked so hope everybody's been staying blessed i'm going to try and keep coming hard weekly with the content last couple weeks have been lagging behind i think i want to talk about this uh convention the love never fails convention in the next video i i received the pamphlet in the mail i've been reading a bit about it and watching a few videos and i think uh it's going to require a video. So I think that's what's going to come next. I know I talked a while back that I was going to do a video about the Melchizedek piece. And I think I will eventually when the time is right. But I wanted to just sort of take a breath off of some of the more deep spiritual stuff. Because, you know, even for people who are into it, it can, it can take you away if you don't stay grounded. If you don't stay balanced, you know, stay here. So this is what it is for today. Hope everybody's staying blessed back here in the rainforest once again and we're coming hard see you all next time like subscribe peace love i'm out